Very exciting news. Today's video is sponsored by Cricut. Yeah, I know. No freaking way. How am I cool enough for this? But that's later in the video. Okay, now let's roll the clip. <laughs> In the original setup, I was supposed to say like, come on in, but I felt way too awkward saying that into an empty hallway with my camera just sitting there on a dry bod, so... Hey, welcome back to my dorm room. I heard you were back for another dorm tour. What was that? It was because you found out that I completely revamped the way that this entire space is organized and where some of the furniture pieces are. Although I wasn't able to completely rearrange all of the furniture the way that I actually want it to be because that bunk bed is nailed to the wall. And since there are three beds crammed into this room that was originally intended to be a double, but now I live in it as a single room, so I just have three beds in here. I can't really move any furniture when one of them is nailed to the wall because it kind of ends up being like one of those weird block puzzle games that we keep getting mobile ads for. Also, by the way, thanks to the extremely abnormal year we've been having, this is also an extremely abnormal dorm room setup. For those of you who might be prospective UCLA students who want to know a bit more about like how the dorms are here, this is the courtside building. It's one of the plaza with a private bathroom buildings. And normally this is a triple room. That's why there are three beds in here. It's meant for three people to live in. Due to COVID safety and social distancing measures, they've actually given everyone who's living in on-campus housing this year an entire plaza with private bathroom room to themselves. And it's honestly been a pretty nice life. Been spoiled with the amount of space I can just sprawl out over. But this is definitely not normal and I don't recommend bringing this much stuff or planning to have this much space. I will give some tips and recommendations about what is actually necessary and what I just have just cause I can. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've definitely done a good amount of updating to my dorm room and since the end of my freshman year of college is nigh, I thought might as well be a good time to give an updated brand new dorm door. So let's get started. <laughs> So this is the door that you just came in through. We've got my emergency exit plan and a little peephole. So if anybody's knocking on my door, I can make sure it's actually on campus housing maintenance and not a serial killer. And then on these three conveniently placed command hooks, I've got my emotional support tote bag, which I use for, you know, anytime I want to leave my dorm room. I have my backpack and then I got this 100 year anniversary UCLA tote bag for like $1.50 during one of the clearance sales at the spirit store So that was a freaking good deal and in here I have some extra tote bags and things that I use for grocery shopping so that I don't have to use the single-use tote bags and here is actually a little crochet bag that I crocheted myself with a bunch of random granny squares that actually aren't the same size which is why this bag is so lumpy and then directly to the left over here this is the closet I actually use for storing clothes and for cleaning and laundry supplies. Up top we've got Tide Pods. I was gonna make a joke about like, oh, these are not a snack, but I don't think anybody in Gen Z actually thought it was normal to eat Tide Pods. I think like three people did that as an ironic joke. And then millennials and Gen X decided to make fun of us for that, even though literally no one actually thought it was a good idea. Anyways, we've got a bunch of trash bags and this red Ikea bin up here is full of a bunch of other cleaning supplies, including all-purpose cleaning spray, microfiber cloths, laundry dryer balls, all sorts of good stuff in there. And then here is where I keep all the clothes hangers that I brought that I never actually use. But anyways, we've got a couple of collared shirts and bigger jackets that are just a hassle to fold here on floor number two. And next let's move on to ground level. This is where I keep this little drying rack, which honestly has been a godsend. It does take up quite a bit of space, but I feel like if you have a roommate, you can just share it with your roommate and you can both use it to like not shrink your sweaters. Overall, pretty useful, would recommend. And I would also highly recommend a laundry hamper that is similar to the one that I have here. Basically, if you Velcro it right, it works like a tote bag that you can just put on your shoulder and walk around with. Honestly, everything on ground level is just like fantastic, would recommend. We've got my miniature vacuum and my Swiffer sweeper, which have been incredibly useful for keeping the hardwood floors clean. 
And then in that back corner there, I have my yoga mat. And last but not least, I almost forgot about this because I have honestly never used it in the entire time I've been here because this is LA. I think we've had like three rainy days during the entire school year so far and it's almost summer so we're not really gonna be having any more from here on out. But just in case, I need to live out those singing in the rain fantasies with a janky $5 umbrella. We've got that here covered literally because an umbrella covers you from the rain god there have already been too many stupid jokes in this video let's move on and the most exciting part of this tour we've got my trash and recycling i really thought about invoking some of that i grew up with a bunch of millennials because i was on tumblr from too young of an age energy but making a joke about how oh this is like the real home of my dorm room because i'm such a trash can but I feel like just like small bean memes and my purple hair, these things may be better left in 2012. I mean, I guess in the spirit of garbage, here I am oversharing when you, literally all you wanted to do was look at the inside of my dorm room. And you did right from the start. So my dorm room has like three main zones. Each one corresponds to each of the three desks that are in here because once again, this is meant to be a triple room. This first desk is my hobbies corner and this is the section where I definitely have the most random junk that I don't recommend you bring to college. Up top we have actually um, my book study with me, which I wrote while I was a junior in high school and I feel like this was the peak of my existence. I really didn't think I was going to be the type to peak in high school, but this was definitely my peak. And then on the shelf below that, we've got a couple of aspirational fitness items and just like recovering from how badly I got injured by doing three years of long distance track and cross country. Next we have a little miniature model greenhouse that I built. If you watched my vlogs from earlier this year, I did this as my like depressive episode project during fall quarter and I think it turned out pretty well. And then my next hobby that I actually do quite often is video and photography equipment. So I keep my cameras on these little crochet coaster things that I crocheted myself. Speaking of which, the main desk surface is also covered with just more video equipment, including my voiceover mic and this cute little standing desk that I tend to use while I'm editing, which is a very long process of just sitting at my desk. And sometimes my butt hurts from sitting on these wooden chairs with my not very fleshy booty. <laughs> Underneath here, the only space I could fit this is the case that I use to store my lighting equipment. Next, let me show you how I organize my drawers. Spoiler alert, these drawers are not particularly organized, I'm gonna be honest. This one mostly contains tech equipment. Like this box contains some extra mechanical keyboard keycaps or extra phone cases and screen protectors for my phone. We've also got, you know, filming equipment stuff like SD cards and camera batteries. The organizational innovation in here that I'm really quite proud of though is the system I use to organize my cables. Basically, I took these little free cardboard boxes that my dad used to get when he used to go on business trips and I labeled them with what the cable is. I know, it seems pretty simple and self-explanatory, but you know, these simple systems seem so hard to set up, but once you've done it, it's so time-saving to not have to rifle through a tangled spaghetti blob of unidentifiable cables. And that's my tech drawer. And below that we have the arts and crafts small objects drawer. Honestly, I don't use most of the stuff that's in here. Most of these are crafts that I briefly took up as part of my identity crisis and then subsequently lost interest in. But the last drawer is for the hobby that I've actually stuck with this entire time, and that is knitting and crochet. So this drawer mostly contains in-progress squares that I'm currently building a massive stockpile of, just because I can, you know? It's the local currency here in Jasmine's dorm room, and I can guard my fortress and hoard my wealth if I want. Um, but the actual explanation is that I'm making all these squares so that once I'm done with enough squares, I can assemble them into a little gridded cardigan, kind of inspired by the J.W. Anderson cardigan that Harry Styles wore that one time, and I am obsessed with the design of. Also, 
up here on the top bunk, which I don't have any sheets on because I'm physically unable to put fitted sheets on a corner bed top bunk. But at least it's convenient as a storage space because I don't ever use it. So these boxes actually are all a bunch of exciting Cricut supplies. And you might be wondering why exactly I have all this stuff from Cricut. It's because this video was sponsored by them, but we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. This next corner is my getting dressed dresser accessories corner, and I believe this is the most aesthetically pleasing little nook of my dorm room. I've decorated this area with my star-shaped string lights, and I hung up my necklaces to both help keep them organized and untangled, and to use these pretty shiny objects as pretty shiny decorations. Here on this side, we've got my frog crochet hat, which I crocheted myself, and I think this is the cutest thing I've ever made. I love it so much. And they live up here on top of my uh, DIY coat hanger, I guess, since the hats go on top of the bunk bed post. And then I used command hooks so that I could hang up jackets and pants that I've worn once but are still clean enough to wear another time. I'd also like to introduce you to the first of my house plants that you're going to meet today. This one is named Levy. This is not only a cute lamp, but it's also my wax warmer. Since in a dorm room, you're not supposed to have candles or anything else that like, you know, actually catches on fire. I also have a couple of trays for my accessories. This clear acrylic one is for my hair accessories. This white moon shaped one is for my earrings. And then this blue tray is for other non earrings jewelry accessories. And then this one is for my little tiny crystal collection because at one point when I hit like rock bottom, I started literally collecting rocks. I don't really actually believe in a like spiritual power of the crystals. Although if you do, I'm not here to infringe on your like religious beliefs. I just have always been a geology and rocks and minerals nerd. You might also be thinking, where the heck did you get this cool moon phases wall hanging that is so artistically and artisanally draped between these two bunk beds? Well, I actually made them myself using the products created by the sponsor of today's video, Cricut. In this segment of the video, I'll be showing you how I made these beautiful celestial wall decorations using some metallic cardstock and of course the Cricut Maker Smart Cutting Machine, which made it super quick and easy to put together all these beautiful shapes. My first step was to make the templates. For the Moon Phases garland that I'll be demonstrating today, I traced some images that I found online, but it was also easy to make some templates like the basic stars directly in Cricut Design Space. I uploaded my design directly into Design Space, which is the app that controls your Cricut Maker machine and allows you to go from an image on your computer or your mobile device to an actual real life shape, which is pretty freaking cool. It's really seamless and easily converts a pixel image into a nice smooth shape that is ready for cutting. For this project, I'm cutting shapes from this brushed metallic cardstock so that the star shapes will shine and sparkle kind of like actual stars do. But it doesn't have to be cardboard. One great feature of the Cricut Maker is that it can accurately cut over 300 materials from something as thin and delicate as tissue paper to a thicker material like leather. This feature sounds like it'll be super useful for future craft projects. For instance, I've always wanted to try sewing my own clothes and this would be ideal for allowing me to cut perfect shapes even on difficult to manage fabrics. Anyways, while we watch the maker do its cutting magic, can we just appreciate how freaking cool this machine is? Right now, I'm using the smart cutting blade attachment, which allows it to cut these intricate shapes. If I had to do this by hand, it would take so much time and effort, especially on these little cutout bits. And even then, it definitely wouldn't be so perfect. Beyond the cutting out that I'm doing in this video, the Cricut Maker has a lot of other attachments available, which allows it to do a variety of purposes, like drawing, debossing, engraving, and more. Okay, cool. Now we're done cutting out the first sheet of paper and I'm going to cut out the reverse side next. And one thing to note if you want to do this yourself is to make sure you mirror your template so that the back sides line up properly because they're like reflected. After cutting out these perfect little moon shapes, I'm going to just glue the two sides together and glue in the string in between that paper sandwich as well. After that, I tied together all of the little ornament-like objects onto the longer string to, you know, make the banner shape. My other garlands required some different gluing methods because they're just different shapes, but you get the general idea. 
And with that, we're all done. Just to be safe, I let the glue set for about a day, and then I was ready to hang up my beautiful starry decorations. These were super fun to make. The Cricut Maker made it very easy and fast and convenient to cut out the shapes. And I look forward to making even more star garlands or other craft projects once I buy some more cardstock. Or maybe some fabric to finally try out a sewing project. And that is the end of the sponsored segment. Thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring my video, helping me fund my rocks and minerals addiction. Not really an addiction, I can stop anytime I want, is what they all say. Let's take a look through the rest of my dresser drawers, which really aren't that exciting. This top drawer is the one that I frequent the most because it has my socks, my underwear, short sleeve shirts, and all of my exercise clothing. Also, is this just me? In like every college dorm room advice video I watched before I left for college, everyone said like, don't bring your entire wardrobe. I think that sort of advice applies a lot more to people who are a little bit more maximalist with their wardrobe decisions. But if you don't already fill like three dresser drawers with clothing at home, just bring all your clothes. Cause like, I only fill the top two dresser drawers with clothes anyway, and I feel like I have like a good amount of clothing for like a good amount of outfits, although I'm really no fashion icon, so maybe, maybe I am doing it wrong. Maybe I should own more clothes, but it seems so environmentally bad to me to own that much clothing, so I don't. And that brings me to the second drawer where I keep every other garment of clothing that I own. And this is mostly dresses, pants, and jackets. And lastly, this bottom drawer mostly contains more yarn and half-finished crochet projects. And besides all this yarn and crochet stuff, I also just have extra towels, pillowcases, sheets, and other like linens that are needed for a room. Wait, can you even hear me from over there? As you can see here, we've got this bunk bed just like jutting out into the middle of the dorm room, kind of like a little peninsula. It's the Florida of my dorm room, I guess. I kind of treat this bottom bunk as a sofa. I've covered it with a sheet. We've got throw blankets, comfy pillows, my little backrest reading pillow, and my two stuffed animals. We've got Sharkeel O'Neal. I got this as a gift from one of my friends, and I've actually been gifted two IKEA sharks. Two IKEA sharks is not a lot, but to quote Dr. Doofenshmirtz in that one TikTok audio, it's not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. And my other stuffed animal is named BV. You might be sensing a little bit of a theme happening with the names of my various objects. Then up here on the top bunk is where I actually sleep. I keep it pretty minimal because when I sleep, I'm out like a light. I'm not gonna have any fun enjoying the comforts of like a throw pillow or anything because I pretty much pass out as soon as my head hits the pillow. Here in this kind of cramped little window corner is my workstation desk. I've really optimized my desk setup for my efficiency. So first we've got my laptop on top of this little wooden laptop stand thing that helps it keep ventilated and makes it a lot more comfortable for my neck. And we've got my mechanical keyboard because I love the satisfying clickety clackety noise although I'm sure it's so loud that whoever is on the other side of this wall can definitely hear it. We've also got my lovely Cricut Maker machine that you saw a fantastic demonstration of earlier in this video. I try to keep my desk surface as clear as possible, but right now we've got a little empty mug of tea because I drank it earlier, but I didn't clean it up yet. On the right side here, there's a lot of stuff kept in storage. In this back corner here, I've got most of the books and notebooks and my iPad, which I use for schoolwork. I also have two cups of highlighters, honestly, mostly for the aesthetic. Like the only ones I really use these days are my erasable highlighters because I still use those to annotate my textbooks. And say hello to the second house plant of our tour, Spooderman. I also have an in-progress crochet project here because I like to work on crochet projects during lectures because it helps me pay attention, strangely enough. Like, whenever there's a kind of break where I don't feel like I have to be writing something down, before I started crocheting stuff during lecture, I would just go on my phone, which would like actually fully distract me. But when I'm crocheting, I'm not really thinking about crocheting, I'm still just paying attention to the lecture which means that I can occupy my fidgety hands without actually mentally being distracted. Then the shelf below that has some of the taller makeup stuff. And strangely enough, a bag of Scandinavian swimmers that are definitely not supposed to be here. Let's get into the drawers as well. And this first drawer 
is where I store the majority of my makeup stuff. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this way of organizing my makeup though. Like it kind of keeps everything together acceptably, but it's not perfect. We've got this drawer, which has the majority of the school supplies that I use day to day. Honestly, at this point, my voice is kind of shot and I don't feel like listing out the names of every single object that's in here. So I'll just let you visually perceive it. This closet contains a portal to Narnia. No, actually, it's the least exciting thing in this entire room, besides maybe like the trash can or the toilet. The top shelf is just refills for a variety of personal care items. Like here we got pads, face masks, hand soap, just a lot of random things that normally go in the bathroom. Oh my God, the framing of the shot is so awkward, but like the bunk bed post is right here, so I can't move the tripod there. But anyways, my micro fridge is right here. I rented this because it has a microwave and a freezer and a fridge, and that would be pretty freaking useful, right? Um, well, it grew mold a while back, I think because I left it unplugged during the winter break and then a bunch of stuff in there like melted and then spilled and then started to grow mold in the freezer section somehow. Ugh, it was disgusting and I'm traumatized and I am never using this ever again. So I just wasted 200 freaking dollars renting an appliance that I am not going to use. And then we've got this rug that I never use and I'll probably give it away to someone else who's moving in once I move out and a suitcase that I'm gonna use to move out when I move out. But even though I don't use my micro fridge any longer, I do have some kitchen appliances that I actually do use regularly here in my little illicit kitchen corner. I know I'm not supposed to have these in a dorm room. I don't have enough meal swipes to get myself breakfast every day. So I got myself a toaster so I can make myself breakfast. And I also got myself hot water so I can make myself breakfast tea. Also, I have this cute little neon sign. I do find it a little weird that it just says baby on it. It's kind of like how one of my friends pointed out to me that I listened to a lot of kind of like messed up song lyrics or like songs about being somewhat explicitly non-straight when I am in fact in a straight relationship. And it's because I just like don't pay attention to song lyrics most of the time. Like I just kind of listen to the beat and the melody and I just like vibe with that, but I don't pay attention to the words. And so that's what I'm going to do with this neon sign that just says infant on it. We'll just appreciate the vibes and the aesthetic and not really care about the range of English lexicon contained within it. Over here directly next to my illicit kitchen is my dining region. I have an army of water and a gigantic Brita pitcher that is completely empty because I drink like at least one of these every single day. And speaking of hydrated organisms, my proud snake plant. They are the original that Levy and BV were named to go along with. This is Evie. And I also have a little vase of flowers. I think these are called baby's breath flowers. I got them from Trader Joe's on my weekly grocery run. This top drawer is for my various breakfast foods and a couple of snacks. Mostly it's just tea and hot drinks almond butter and toast, which are like the three food groups that my body survives off of mostly. I've also just got some single use compostable plates. Honestly, I don't really recommend bringing as many reusable utensils and like ceramic wear. The amount of motivation it takes to wash my dishes in my little tiny dorm room sink is way too high and I never end up actually doing it. So I thought that instead of making myself live in a filth, I would just go out and buy myself a couple of compostable single-use things. And then the drawer below that has snacks. There are a lot of other drawers in this little desk complex, but only one of them is filled next to the entryway. So let me go show you that. We've made it full circle back to the main entryway area, and this drawer here is where I keep most of my everyday essentials, like my miniature hand sanitizer and hand cream and lip balm and my wallet and earbuds and all sorts of you know, essentials. Hello and welcome to my bathroom. Come on in. In this very luxurious space, we've got the ladder that would normally be used to get onto that other top bunk that you saw earlier, but I don't use it to get onto that top bunk because I never need to get onto that top bunk. So I use it as a place to store towels. And then we've also got a bunch of other just like built-in towel racks that, would you guess it, are used to store towels. Honestly, I've been filming myself talking to myself for a really long time at this point, and it feels really weird just like pointing out the features of a bathroom, but here we go, I guess. Toilet, shower, sink. 
oh, this drawer is open. How embarrassing for me. I guess the only interesting noteworthy thing to point out is since the last time I filmed my dorm tour in fall quarter, I discovered that this mirror is actually like a little medicine cabinet thing. And that is the end of my dorm tour. We're ending on a real anticlimactic, maybe you could even call it crappy note. Haha. <laughs> That was, that was low hanging fruit. Not exactly humor, but you're not here because I'm a comedian. But regardless of the reasons that you watch my videos, thank you so much for watching this one and I hope you found it interesting. I upload new videos about student life on this channel every week and you can visit my Instagram, my TikTok, and my second channel for more occasionally school related content. See you next time. Is this